Hey everybody, this is Russ from Metro Game Core. It's been about a year since I did my last PS Vita jailbreaking video, and so I think it's time for an update. To be honest, not a lot has changed about the whole process, but Sony has released an update to the firmware, and so we are going to address that here in this video. And over the past year, I've received feedback from people who have gotten stuck at various parts of the tutorial. And so earlier this week, I went through and I streamlined my process, and this video here is going to be the result of that work. And so in this video, we're just going to take a plain old stock PS Vita and we're going to set it up with a permanent jailbreak and then get you started into the wonderful world of PS Vita homebrew. Now you might be wondering why you would want a PS Vita and why you'd want to jailbreak it in the first place. Well, these are my main reasons right here. Number one is there is a whole library of PS Vita games that are a lot of fun. And there's not really anywhere else that you can play these games other than on a PS Vita. And after jailbreaking the device, you'll be able to play backups of those games directly on the device without having to swap out cards cards all the time. And the key to using that feature is to actually set it up to be able to use a micro SD card instead of the Sony proprietary storage. And I'll show you how to set that up here in this video as well. Now once you have that unlocked, in addition to PS Vita games, you'll have an app called Adrenaline. This will allow you to access both the PSP and PS1 catalog, and all of these games are going to run like they're on native hardware. In addition, there's some great emulation you can do on this device as well. Once it's jailbroken, you'll be able to use RetroArch to play all the way up to the Super Nintendo catalog, and there are a couple standalone emulations emulators as well. There's a pretty decent one for Nintendo 64 and a brand new Dreamcast emulator just released. I'll be making a video on that here pretty soon. And finally, the community has been hard at work at porting over a bunch of games which run natively on the PS Vita. Some examples include the Grand Theft Auto series, Sonic Mania, and even Max Payne. So yeah, I think that it's still a great time to buy a PS Vita even in 2022, and this video is going to help you get on your way if you do pick one up. And it's pretty easy to find a PS Vita in the used marketplace, although some of the best quality ones come from Japan. And I'm happy to report that this guide will work with any PS Vita from any region. In fact, the Vita we're going to be using here today in this tutorial is from Japan. Anyway, let's try to get through this tutorial in less than 20 minutes. And so without any further delay, let's jump into it. Okay, first things first, when jailbreaking any device, including the PS Vita, make sure you consult the written guides. Now, I have a written guide on my website that'll walk you through this entire process, plus a lot more things. In addition to jailbreaking your Vita, it'll show you how to do things like setting up the PSP and PS1 emulator, and then also how to set up RetroArch, and Nintendo 64, and some other quality of life adjustments as well. Now, in addition to mine, there's another one called the PS Vita Hacks Guide. And this one's super helpful as well, it'll walk you through the entire process too. And so this video is meant to be a compliment to the written guides here in case you're a visual learner like me. Now, if the video doesn't work and you also have issues with the written guides, then I would recommend going to the Henkaku Discord server. There's a lot of people in there who are way smarter than me about this stuff and they can help you get on your way. Now, there are two main PS Vita models, the 2000 series, as you can see on top here, and then also the 1000 series. And this guide will work with either of these models, but for the PS Vita 1000 series here on the bottom, you're going to need to use a Sony proprietary memory card. It doesn't matter what the size of the card is, but you will have to pick one of these up in order to do the jailbreak. The PS Vita 2000 has its own internal storage, so you don't have to worry about that. Either way, other than that, both of these are going to work just fine. Now, if you already have a jailbroken PS Vita like this one here, and you're getting a prompt to update the firmware on the device, let me show you how to adjust that here. What you want to do here is go into the Henkaku settings, make sure that enable version spoofing is on, and then under spoofed vision, change that to 3.74. And that's it, you're good to go, you won't get any prompts anymore. But for everybody else, we're going to start from scratch. This is a PS Vita right here that has been factory restored to 3.74. Now there are a couple other things you're going to need for the PS Vita jailbreak. The first is this micro SD card adapter. These are super cheap, less than 10 bucks, and I'll have a link to them in my video description. And additionally, to go with that adapter, you're going to want to have a micro SD card. I recommend 128 gigs at a minimum, but 256 gigs seems to be the sweet spot for me. And then finally, you're going to need a means to plug this PS Vita into a computer. For the 2000 series, it can be a micro USB cable like this one, and for the 1000 series, you'll need to use the charging cable that came with it. Now another important thing to do before we get started is to log into the PlayStation Store. You can do this by signing in with your regular PlayStation account, or you can make a specific account for this PS Vita. This is important if you want to download other games later, or if you want to get trophies for the games that you play. And like I mentioned, this is a factory restored PS Vita right here, so it's going to be running version 3.74. Now if you're not running 3.74, what you want to do here is go into the system update and then update it to the most recent version. And if you want to check the firmware version that you're running with your PS Vita, what you want to do is scroll down 
to the bottom of the settings here and then select system and system information. And yeah, 3.74. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. We'll go to my website first and we're gonna download these two files that you can see here. One is called Final H Encore and the other one is called Vita Deploy. To download these, just go ahead and grab the most recent version from GitHub. For Final H Encore, it's gonna be a seven zip file. And for Vita Deploy, you want the one that's in a zip file that says FHE. So just make sure you download both of these two files. Now let's take that 7-zip file of Final HE and unzip it. I'm using 7-zip right here, but you could also use your regular Windows unzipping utility. Either way, make sure that you extract this file into its own folder. From there, just go ahead and move the Vita Deploy file directly into that folder, no need to unzip. And you can also delete the 7-zip file of Final H Encore. And so here we are, nice and clean. Next, we're gonna open up Final H Encore, and if you added Vita Deploy correctly, you'll see a little arrow on the right here. Just click on that and then select Vita Deploy. Next, plug your PS Vita into your PC. If you get any sort of connecting error or whatever, just go ahead and close out of that. What you wanna do is open something called Content Manager. And with any luck, this should directly connect to your computer. To test that, go ahead and select Copy Content. And after you've pressed that button, you should see Connected Device and the name of your PC here on the top. On your computer, you'll see that it'll connect to your Vita and it'll actually show the name of your username right there. If this happens for you, awesome. Just go ahead and click Trim H Encore and then hit Let's Go. Then just let it go through its process. Now for many people, this isn't going to connect to your PC the first time around. And if you go back to my website, I'll have a blue box right here that says PC connection troubleshooting. What I recommend is going through each of these steps one at a time to see which one works. Typically this first one will work the best. What you wanna do is click on this QCMA driver and it's gonna download a specific file that you can then use. All you have to do is just double click on it and then run the installation. And generally this will install the drivers you need and then it'll connect to your PC. If it doesn't, I would go back to that blue box and check the next step and go on from there. Either way, once you've connected and you've hit the let's go button, it'll go through through this whole package installation. Once it shows a 100% like this here, we can go back to the PS Vita and finish the installation. Back on the Content Manager screen, we're gonna select Copy Content PC to PS Vita, then Applications, then PS Vita, and here you should see H Encore and Vita Deploy. You can press Select All and then Copy. It's gonna ask to confirm that you're gonna copy these to your system and just press OK. This will take about two minutes altogether to install them, but once you're done, you can close out of Content Manager, and on the bottom now, you should see these two apps. So congratulations, that was the hardest part of this whole video. First, we wanna start up H Encore. Here, you wanna hold down on the R1 button on the PS Vita and then open up the app. It's gonna give you a warning about not earning trophies, just go ahead and hit yes. It'll do a couple flashes of Windows, and then it'll get to this screen here. And here, you don't need to do anything other than just exit the app. And so once that's done, you can go back to the main menu, go into settings, and then near the top now you should see Henkaku settings. And here you wanna select Enable Unsafe Homebrew. After that, you can go ahead and close out of the settings, and we're ready for the next step, which is Vita Deploy. Now, after you've opened that up, you want to select install a different OS and then quick 3.65 install. Now this process will take several minutes as well. It's a good time to wipe fingerprints off of your screen. Now during this installation, it's important that the PS Vita doesn't go to sleep. So make sure that you tap the screen every once in a while so it doesn't time out. And now once it's done downloading the firmware package, it's going to ask you to confirm that you want to downgrade to 3.65. Here, just go ahead and press X. It's going to pause for about 20 seconds and ask, do you really want to do this? From here, you can press X to say, yeah, man, I want to do it. Now this process is also going to take a couple minutes and it's going to go through the process of downgrading your firmware from 3.74 to 3.65. Once it's done, it's gonna reboot your PS Vita for you and then you can jump right in. And so now if we go into the settings app, we can scroll all the way to the bottom again and select system, system information. And so now you should see the modded 3.65 version here. Okay, so congratulations, you've now permanently hacked or jailbroken your PS Vita. Now let's do the fun stuff, like adding the micro SD card. Again, you're gonna wanna have this micro SD card adapter, and I've changed my mind, I'm gonna use a 256 gig card here instead. Go ahead and insert the card into the adapter, and then plug the adapter into the top of your PS Vita. And now we're gonna set it up using Vita Deploy, so go ahead and open up that app, and then scroll down near the bottom to the miscellaneous section. Here, go ahead and select Format a Storage Device, and then Format Target Storage. This will take a minute and you're not gonna see any indications, but eventually it'll say formatted. From here, you want to reset your Vita. So hold down on the power button to power off. And then once it's been powered down, you can go ahead and power it back up. Okay, once you've rebooted, we want to go into settings and then select devices and then storage devices. From here, you want to select use YAMT. And again, here you want to reset your Vita. 
Now, once you've booted back into the device, we're gonna go back into Vita Deploy and then select the top menu here, File Manager. Now here under the UMAO setting, you're gonna see that it actually shows the storage capability of your SD card. What we wanna do is move all the files from the internal storage of UXO over to UMAO. So let me show you how to do that real quick. You're gonna go into the UXO section here, and then for all the folders here, other than the one that says Skello Trash, you wanna press the square button to highlight them. Once you have all the folders and files highlighted, press the triangle button and select Copy. From there, move up to the UMAO section, then press down once to hover over the Skello Trash, press the triangle button and then select Paste. And that's it, from there it's gonna copy everything from UXO over to UMAO. And this is gonna give you a seamless transition of your data over to the micro SD card. Next, go back into the settings section and then go into devices, then storage devices. And here we wanna change the UXO to SD2 Vita. And then you can move the UMAO over to memory card. You could also use internal storage if you're using a PS Vita 2000 model. Either way, once you've made those changes, go ahead and restart your device. And after it's rebooted, your primary storage will now be the micro SD card. To verify that, let's go into settings and then scroll down to system and then system information. And there near the bottom, you can see that the capacity is now 238 gigs. All right, so we're good to go with that. Now, while I still have you here, let's go over a couple other things that are really important when first setting up a PS Vita. For starters, we're gonna download a bunch of apps that'll help you on your way. Here, we're gonna go into Vita Deploy and select App Downloader. First, we're gonna install Vita Shell. This is probably one of your best friends here. It's a great file manager. There's also a Vita Homebrew browser, but this has been down a lot lately, and so I'm gonna show you how to install things manually instead. We're also gonna add the ITLS installer. This will allow us to access the PlayStation Store. Now the next two here, Enzo and YAMT installers, we don't need these, we've already done this. But if you wanna access PSP and PS1 games, I recommend using Adrenaline. And I have a whole guide for this on my website and a video for it as well. Now I'm not gonna show this one off here in the video because it's a little bit shady, but I will say that if you wanna access backups of PS Vita, PS1, and PSP games, this is the app that you're gonna use. Additionally, if you wanna transfer over some of your save games from previous PS Vitas, you could use that app here, and you could use this app to add custom themes as well. But really the last app I wanna show is this one here called Registry Editor. If you have a PS Vita 2000 like this model here, I definitely recommend getting that one. Either way, once you've made your selections, go ahead and scroll to the top here and select download the selected apps. This is gonna take a minute, but after you're done, you'll see all of the apps listed here. And the file extension for PS Vita apps are called VPKs. Now here, what we wanna do is highlight one of them, press the triangle button, and then we can select mark all. Next, we can press the triangle button again, go down to more, and then select install all. Now for each of these, it's gonna ask you to confirm that you wanna install them. Just go ahead and go through this process. And once the last one's downloaded, you're good to go. You can go ahead and close out of Vita Deploy. And now on your home screen, you'll have a bunch of new apps. It's like Christmas. And so here on the top is the Adrenaline app. Like I mentioned, this one allows you to play PSP and PS1 games. But to start, we're gonna run the ITLS app. This is the one that's gonna allow us to access the PlayStation Store. And all you have to do is open this up and then select install the full ITLS package. Once this is done, it's gonna reboot the system for you, but once you're back into the menu, you can now go into the PlayStation Store and access your content. In fact, I didn't have to re-sign in or anything. Now, let's also make sure that you don't get any notices about any future updates. And there's two things we can do to prevent this in the future. Number one, scroll down to System, and then under Auto Start Settings, make sure that you unselect the one that says Download Update File for System Software. Next, back on the Main Settings menu, go into the Henkaku Settings, and make sure that Enable Version Spoofing is on, and then change the Spoof version to 3.74. And that's it, you're good to go with that. Now, if you do have a Japanese PS Vita like mine, you can actually change the X and Circle buttons if you'd like right here. So instead of using the Circle button to confirm things, you can then use it to cancel things instead. It's all gonna be totally up to you, but that's where you would change it. Now, if you also have a PS Vita 2000, then let's go into that registry editor and make an adjustment here. Here, you wanna go into config and then display. And within here, we wanna change the color space mode as well as the RGB range mode from zero to one. And this only needs to be done one time, but what this will basically do is increase the vibrancy and saturation of the colors on your display. Now the PS Vita 1000 model has an OLED display, which looks a lot more vibrant, but this one gets it pretty close. Anyway, once you've made those two changes, go ahead and press start to confirm them, and then the app will close itself. From here, you wanna restart your PS Vita, and now you'll have colors that are a little bit more saturated than they were before. I think this looks beautiful. If you don't like it, you can always go back to the registry editor and change them back to zero. 
And finally, let me show you how to use one of the most important apps you can use, which is Vita Shell. And like I mentioned, this is a file manager. It's going to look pretty familiar because we had a version of it within Vita Shell. But if you back all the way out, you can see here all the different file systems here. The most important part here is it'll give you access to your memory card via USB cable. So that way you can download apps onto your computer and then move them over to the PS Vita easily. Now there is one thing we need to do to set this up. What we want to do is press the start button and here under USB device, change it from memory card over to SD to Vita. And as you can see here, when you press the select button, it's going to trigger the USB. Either way, if you have a cable connected, now you can press the select button and on your PC, your micro SD card slot will now show up. What I typically like to do is take the apps and put them in the downloads folder for easy access. Now, if you're done with your connection back on your PS Vita, you would press the cancel button, either X or circle, depending on the region of your PS Vita. But yeah, that's how you would easily access your PS Vita file system from your computer. Now you might be wondering where do I get apps in order to add them to the PS Vita? Well, like I mentioned, the homebrew browser has been down a lot lately. And so currently I recommend using the VitaDB website. And this hosts all the same files from the homebrew browser, but you can access them from your PC and then transfer them over using Vita Shell. And so here you can pick out some homebrew apps or ports to try out. For example, a recent one here is Fahrenheit, also known as Indigo Prophecy. And so within here, you could go ahead and download the VPK. And also under the releases page, you can see the same files. But most importantly, on each of these GitHub pages, if you go to the main page here, it's going to give you detailed instructions on specific plugins and apps and everything else that you need to set up depending on the game that you're adding. And if you want to learn more about plugins and things like that, then I would recommend checking out my written guide. But honestly, I think that's enough for today's video. I've now showed you how to jailbreak a PS Vita from scratch as well as setting it up with a micro SD card and then a couple really important tweaks to get you started on your way. From here, I would recommend checking out my written guide as well as some of the other videos that I've made that will show you how to do things like set up a PSP environment using the Adrenaline app and then also how to install and set up RetroArch for retro games. Either way, I hope you enjoyed this video and let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. As always, thank you for watching and be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful and we will see you next time. Happy gaming.